Hi, hi. Welcome to the Human Design for Marketing podcast. I'm your host, Yvette Mayer, and this show is for you if you're done with cookie cutter marketing and ready to build your personal brand in alignment with who you really are. Let's dive in. Hello, and welcome back to the Human Design for Marketing podcast with your host, Yvette Mayer, who happens to be me. Uh, Today, I'm coming to you on the cusp of the Human Design Transit Chart moving from gate 18 to gate 48. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, this episode is going to be about the transits and how we can work with the transits in our marketing. And number two, I had a very real life experience of the transits over the last week or so. And I thought, you know what, telling the story of the impact of the transits on my life, my business and my marketing is going to help this land for you. But before I get into story time, let me just quickly talk to you about what the transits are. Well, essentially transits is a word for planets moving. And each of the planets, including the sun, which is the primary energy, moves at a different pace. Now the calendar, the calendar that we live by, around this planet we call Earth is governed by the rotation of the planets around the sun, right? And the sun in particular, being the primary energy, is the dominant force in things like astrology and human design. So the primary energy in the human design chart is the energy of the sun. It's the life force energy. And within human design, there are 64 gates in total. Now, as the sun transits, it moves through each of these 64 gates across a single year. So as a parallel, if we're talking astrology, there are 12 star signs and the sun is in transit stationed with a different sign once a month, hence 12 over a year. But in human design, there are 64 gates and therefore it's a much faster movement. Uh, The transit happens into the sun every six or seven days and therefore six or seven times 64 and you get the full year of the transits. Okay, That's kind of the background information, the cosmos info, but how does this work for you? Well, the transit chart in human design is specifically in any given moment where the planets are stationed in relationship to the human design gates. Yeah, all the cosmos, right? When you were born, your human design body graph chart is simply a snapshot of where the transits were at that exact time that you were born. Also three months beforehand on the design side. Okay. So if you like, it's a snapshot of the planetary activation at any time. And we also look at the transits into in, sorry, in how it correlates to our own chart because it's like the background frequency. Think of the transits as the background frequency or even I've heard it described as like the weather. It's the environment. It's the collective consciousness and environment. So the energetic frequency at a collective level is the transits. Your personal experience is going to be individual because it also interplays with the chart or your chart and how you were designed based on your specific time of birth. Now, when it comes to our marketing, this is very, very valuable information for lots of reasons. But the way that I found myself diving deep into the transits was having a few different clients ask me I about how they not only could use human design to understand themselves better, but how they could use human design in the way that they communicated to their audience and to their prospective clients. And in the beginning, I'm like, yeah, it's not really like that because human design is about your personal frequency. It's about 
elevating your frequency so that you're in complete alignment with how you are designed as a human and therefore most able to live up to your potential. That being said, the more that I started to dance with how human design and marketing work together, the door opened to the transits and it has been a game changer for me personally in how I market my own business, as well as how I work with my clients and the broader community and also the wisdom that I'm developing that is IP, that is being birthed through me right now. So that's the what are the transits part of this episode. Now I want to talk to you about how this played out in my world last week. So at the beginning of last week, we moved into the second week of the uh, this round of the Frequency Project, which is my human design for marketing experience. It's a six-week program at the moment. And I have 13 incredible incredible humans on the inside. And part of their onboarding and the program itself and making sure that they get the most out of it is that I, or we as a team, I'll get there, share with every person doing the Frequency Project a PDF style human design for marketing reading. Now, last week... I needed to get these reports out quickly because I wanted everybody to have their information before our call, which was on Thursday. And so I think it was on Tuesday last week, Monday, Tuesday, I was basically cramming, doing many, many, many human design for marketing reports. Now, honestly, when I first started working with human design, each one of these would have taken me hours. But I have systemized and set up processes to really speed this whole thing up. However, what actually happened was that there were a few mistakes made along the way. And it wasn't necessarily something I did, but it was part of a of the system breaking down mainly where I briefed my assistant to do certain things, not checked her work, the rest is history. And so... I kind of went into this judgy, judgy energy of myself. I started thinking, oh, my God, my business is growing. I'm not keeping up with it. I hate any failure when it comes to attention to detail. I thought that I was concentrating. How can I have made these mistakes? Negative self-talk, repeat, repeat, repeat. And... I went into a bit of a funk. Now, it was also the full moon energy coming into Aries, which is a fiery kind of energy and and does take us into self-reflection. And so I kind of knew that things were coming up for me. And then I leant into the transits and, oh, my goodness. So I I know on last Thursday with the Frequency Project, there are two calls. I repeat the same information twice because I've got um, people in really different time zones. And so I run it in the morning and then again in the afternoon. So in the morning, I shared with the group about how the transits had moved into gate 18 and the way that it was it was impacting me and how I could actually see this energy of judgment. So by the way, gate 18 is, it is the gate of judgment. It's also the gate of striving for perfection, but there's a more, there's always a gift in each gate. There's, there's like a shadow frequency, like a negative kind of frequency, as well as a gift frequency. And the goal with the transits is, or not just the transits, but with the gates, is kind of appreciating that both exist on the same same frequency and leaning into the gift. So what I observed in myself was that in this energy, I was being very judgmental of myself. But the opportunity in there is more of a joy around creative expression and creating something in a way that feels just right for you. And so in between the two calls, I went out to my camper van, love of my life, my camper van, because I received some macrame that I'd ordered to 
do some work in the van, which was basically covering up the storage area with macrame so that it looked better. Now, to me, this is a very creative part of me. I love all things design. I particularly appreciate styling, whether that is myself or at the house. And, and honestly, I think knowing myself as well as I do now, if I had known what I'm like in adulthood, I may have even gone into the arena of uh decorating or design or something like that and I'm talking about in in the home if I had chosen a different career path because that's how much I love it and this absolutely comes through with something like anytime I move and when I bought my van it has to be just right like I'd spend a lot of time and it lights me up getting it just right which is also the energy of gate 18. And so in between my calls, I went to the van and I got it I got it all set up and I felt this like expansive energy around the gate 18 of do and also I love the fulfillment of doing it myself. This is very generator energy, right? This like it's so satisfying to have a vision of what it could look like to order off Etsy the macrame to actually ask that they do it in a different length to them what is the standard size to get it and it all works out and to use my Ikea, yep, I bought an Ikea drill, first drill I've ever owned, and then to have to get my head around, well, how am I going to attach the macrame to the van and not damage the van because I don't want the van to lose value because of my creative projects. And so it was a whole thing. And the thing resulted in me having an amazing outcome that I'm really happy about. So see how both of these energies played out for me in this gate, gate 18. I had the experience of being too hard on myself, wanting to be more perfect and judging myself for these errors or typos, if you like. And then I also had the joy that came from attuning into the gift of making things just so and doing that in a more creative energy. And this also made its way into my content. This is very much how I use the transits week in, week out. I contemplate them and then I allow them to kind of, well, give me something to respond to, which is a very generator thing. So any of you out there who are a generator or a manager, you know your strategy is to respond. This is why the transits are so powerful for marketing because it is continual cosmic stimulus for you to respond to. And so I then also made a reel about this whole thing, about the journey of judgment and the flip of judgment being creativity. And I, I used an Oscar Wilde quote about the only true art being creativity. There's more to that quote. But if you want to see it, go check out my Instagram reel that I published at the end of last week while we were in gate 18. Now, the other thing that happened for me in this process is I started to appreciate that I was feeling the impact of this gate 100%. And if you are listening to this podcast in real time, we're in early October, and you also felt yourself being a bit hard on yourself judging yourself, maybe judging others, feeling kind of your perfectionist come out, then that is because of the energy and the frequency of the human design transits. And not just the energy and the frequency for you, but what is coming up for us collectively. And that's not the end of this story. Because the more that I played with this and started to realise that I'd fallen into this kind of energy and this frequency, then it gave me the opportunity to find my way out. Uh, I also went with the full moon and I frequently burn what I want to get rid of in full moons. And then over the weekend, I decided to disconnect from social media and just give myself some space to allow a deeper connection with me and trust that whatever needed to come through would come through. And it did. I picked up uh, 
Florence Scoville Shin, The Complete Works, which I love. She's a, a prophet. Let, let me call her a prophet. She, you know, is like this literature is, I think, close to 100 years old now. And in doing some of that reading and looking at some of the affirmations, I started to feel a shift almost instantly. And the big shift, I'm going to share this honestly with you, is I realised that I have so much trust in human design for marketing in the, and in the impact that it is having on my clients and on myself. But there had been a little part of me that was in the hope like, I hope this is as big as I believe it to be. I hope that the growth that I'm experiencing now continues hope. When the real shift, the identity shift that I needed to make is to have complete faith that this is happening, that this will continue, that I am gifted, that I am unique, and that I am born to bring this wisdom into the world. The absolute faith rock solid confidence and that is what happened while I was switched off over the weekend and what did this look like it looked like me switching off everything electronic outside of you know taking photos but no television no audible books obviously no internet nothing social media I did turn on my phone to make sure no messages had come in because uh, both of my parents are not at a great physical health stage of their life. And so I just wanted to make sure that in case of emergency that I was contactable, but for the most part, devices were on airplane mode or off and I upped my spiritual practices. So that meant reading more philosophical type of text. Um, I also read a lot of Rumi as well as Florence, I meditated consistently more than I have been. I pulled some oracle cards. I journaled a lot. I did the full moon burning. I did all of the things. And I completely filled my cup back up from the inside out. And by Monday, we had a long weekend here in New South Wales and Australia and most of Australia, actually, I felt like a different person. And a part of me was like, oh, it's Monday, but I don't work a traditional week. So best go me and miles of an hour, me and miles an hour back into it. But no, I was in a place of actually that's not aligned for me right now. And so I played golf, but I also had these big drop-ins over the weekend. Uh, one of which is that having the faith means that it's time for me to bring on more resource. I have an incredible full-time VA, incredible, love her. She edits this podcast. Hi, Zan, if you're listening, love her. But I need a resource to support me in human design support and project managing. And it's more of a, an in-between. So like a senior assistant that is in between my full-time assistant and myself. Uh, I'm going to be preparing a job spec, but it will be in areas such as pulling together the readings, checking everything and working alongside me for bigger masterclasses and sales pushes, things like that, potentially supporting me on more. Uh, it's not the... IP part of my work, but it's the distribution when it comes to, okay, so I create all of the transits, but when I share that information, that those actual graphics, they don't need to be me making them, that sort of thing. And then there's also the, okay, how do we systemize even further and automate things so that over time, we as a team can take on 30, 40, 50 clients at a time into a new uh, program like the Frequency Project and not implode at the weight of work coming through. So it's a really exciting time in my business and to have this clarity after 
the 18 wreaked its havoc with me was an amazing, amazing outcome. I also realized that I want to experiment with a a couple of new products. One of them I mentioned on Instagram today, so I'll share it here as well, is actually partnering with just a few, like no more than one a month, business owners that want my support and actually my brain power to create their marketing strategy. I'm seeing it more as a human design powered marketing strategy that is done with you. So there's, you know, there's the, like the briefing part of that, which is done together. There's a lot of work that I do interrogating the human design chart and actually coming up with recommendations for the marketing plan. And then there's coming back together and collaborating to make sure that it's kind of optimized and feels amazing. And then potential for a few calls over the months to follow to help with integration and making sure that it's actually working and making tweaks and things like that. So that's something brand new that just landed for me on the weekend that I'm excited about. It's interesting. It's a bit of a full full circle back to what I did in my corporate life. And I potentially never thought that I would offer this kind of product or service, but I want to experiment with it because I'm at a point in my development now where I have so many experiences of people that they want they want more from me than my coaching. They want, they actually want my experience on their business. So I think it's worth, I think it's worth exploring. So there's that. And there's another product, which you'll hear more about over the next couple of months as well. So that's my experience with the gate 18. And then as I started working towards today and this week's kind of biggest theme in my content I went diving deep into the gate 48, which is coming through tomorrow, which might be today when you're listening to this, but it's basically coming through on the 4th of October, Australian time. Uh, And it's the gate of depth. It is all about demonstrating our knowledge and experience at a very deep level for our subject matter. Uh, I call it the fountain of knowledge from a human design for marketing interpretation of the gates perspective and so with that I thought it was the perfect time to share with you how I'm using the transits and also the level of depth I am going into with the transits and what's coming so you may not know this but over in the human design for Facebook uh, sorry the human design for marketing Facebook group Every week I publish the information about the transits for the seven days ahead. I do this on a Monday Australian, which is like Sunday night in the US, for example, and I go into what's happening with the sun and what's happening with Mercury, given that Mercury is the planet of communications. This is just the entree into what is coming. I am going to be taking a huge leap into the world of the transits and video transmissions and launching my new YouTube channel over the next few months. Not only that, but there has been a huge amount of IP work um, that I've been developing over the last three or four months around the transits and actually getting into what each gate represents from a marketing point of view, the energy of a personal brand that is stationed in that particular gate. For instance, I'm a gate three, which is the gate of difficulty at the beginning. It's all about going from like chaos to resolving it and more like innovation, harmony, that sort of thing. Uh, But for me, I call gate three for marketing the alchemist because it is about finding the gold. It's like the rough on the outside and the challenge and the friction and what that 
creates in us to go digging deeper into what is the true gold here. So it is very alchemy when it comes to how I feel as a personal brand with uh, a gate three in my personality sun. And then I also go into, okay, so thinking about this from a communication point of view, what does this mean from your for your brand story? What does it mean for the types of communication that are going to resonate with others when this gate is in a prominent position? And even some content prompts. Now these, let's call them cosmic content catalysts, have been making their way into the world very gradually uh, with my clients, with those in my frequency project program and with some of Emma Dunwoody's HDX membership community. And the feedback has been absolutely incredible. These are going to end up being pages of my book that will come over. Oh, gosh, when is that going to come? I mean, there are so many things going on in my business, not least of which is the fact that there's a whole lot of video content being shot next week. Next week, I'm on the move. I will be in sunny Brisbane shooting next week. Uh, but the actual book uh, ha- is going to have all of this transit goodness in there amongst other elements of human design for marketing, some of, of which I've already created, other parts which are in my brain right now and not out into the world yet. So enough to say that I thought that this week with Gate 48 being stationed in the sun placement that I would share this with you how much more is coming how much IP that I have been developing and what's in it for you so what's in it for you is a deeper understanding of human design for marketing when it comes to the gates how you can apply this wisdom to your gates from your birth chart and also the benefit and the value of the transits in integrating this insight into things like your content planning uh, and other elements of your marketing. Uh, There's many ways that the human design transits can support your marketing. Uh, Check out my Instagram this week because I'm going to give you five ways that human design transits can multiply your marketing impact because that's my theme for this week. And I want to be transparent with you so you are learning with me and also able to benefit from this wisdom, not just in theory, but in practice. So that's it for this episode. I hope you are loving this podcast as much as I am loving creating it for you. If you're not in the Human Design for Marketing Facebook group, what are you even doing? Get on over there right now. Come and say hi. It is really warming up. We're getting close to a thousand members right now. Uh, So once you get in there, if you have some like-minded friends, invite them as well. Thanks for joining me. I hope and trust that you've got something valuable out of this episode. And I look forward to being back in your ears again sometime soon. Bye for now. There are heaps more resources in the show notes. I can't wait to be back in your ears again soon. Bye for now.